Good people, I'm Dimitri. Welcome to another video. Who knew that making a video about riser cables would be so interesting? And I gotta be honest, uh, heading into this one, I thought it's gonna be very tedious and uninteresting, but a lot of things have been discovered through our testing. So I hope you stick around and really hope that your holidays have been good. And let's just hope that 2021 brings, you know, better world prospects and also uh, better stock for PC components, huh? A lot of you have been reaching out and telling us about all the problems you've been having with riser cables. We read those comments, thank you for submitting them, and in this video we want to do a guide on explaining why certain issues exist with riser cables and how to solve them. The new Corsair K100 RGB is a true flagship keyboard with 4000 Hz polling rate and new OPX optical mechanical switches, quality PBT keycaps, a gorgeous redesign all around, and a new IQ wheel that has a lot of functionality. Check out the K100 RGB down below. I feel like this is going to be incredibly relevant for the SFF community because most ITX enclosures have a riser cable included. And so you build your system in there, you are ready to power on and something just doesn't work. And that's because the riser cable in here may not be compatible with your motherboard and you have to do some tweaks to make it work. Secondly, if you're into showcasing your GPU with a vertical orientation inside your enclosure, there's another potential issue where you, you set everything up and something doesn't work again. The last thing anyone wants when building a new system or upgrading an existing one is encountering any BSODs or black screens or no video output from the graphics card when it was just working five minutes ago and the riser cable might be the culprit here. So we'll talk about all the issues that we've encountered so you don't have to. Okay, so to set the stage and simplify a few things, these riser cable issues are only apparent when you have uh, a Gen 4 GPU and a Gen 4 motherboard and a riser cable in between them. It does not happen on Intel because Intel does not officially support PCIe Gen 4 yet, but that's gonna come in 2021. So this video hopefully is going to be even more relevant by then. And of course, if the GPU is plugged in directly into the motherboard, you have nothing to worry about. These riser cable issues are also becoming more apparent since up until earlier this year, we only had the RX 5000 from the AMD side that was PCIe Gen 4, but now we have the RTX 3000 series and the RX 6000 series from AMD that are all PCIe Gen 4 plus. The new Ryzen 5000 series and the X570 plus the B550 platforms from the AMD which also support PCIe Gen 4, are just incredibly popular and amazing for games. So there's a lot of demand uh, that are heading into that direction. And of course, people are encountering all these issues. And then Intel is going to be launching Rocket Lake in 2021 that will support Gen 4. So again, this compatibility conversation needs to happen now. To demonstrate some of the issues here, we have an RTX 3060 Ti, which is a PCIe Gen 4 interface GPU, plugged into the B550 motherboard, which also has a Gen 4 PCIe interface. So in this first run with a riser cable from Fantex, you can see nothing came up. It's just a black screen without any signal from the graphics card. If your motherboard has a debugging LED, you'll probably see it stuck on uh, initializing the GPU or something with a PCI device. I then tried a different riser cable, this one also from Fantex, and this time we did boot into the BIOS, so there was actually video signal coming from the graphics card into the monitor, but we get this really slow actual video output readout, making it absolutely impossible to navigate through the BIOS this way, you have to restart and plug the graphics card back into the motherboard instead. Mike and Eber also encountered this issue, plus a few BSODs when a riser cable was used on the system, where it was completely BSOD free when the riser cable was removed. Now before Gen 4 interface, there were no riser cable issues as far as I can remember. You plug in the GPU, you plug the rest into the motherboard, boom. No compatibility issues, it's a simple plug and play solution. You can display your graphics card in a vertical orientation, but now with Gen 4 interface, we're dealing with much higher bandwidth, therefore requires better signaling strength, better components, whereas with Gen 3, it's nothing fancy, it's just copper wire with some outer layers of tin and that's it. Some manufacturers like Fractal Design have gone the extra mile to provide additional shielding solution between the layers, but otherwise most riser cables are pretty much the same thing. So with PCIe Gen 4 interface, things get complicated due to the massive amount of bandwidth it pushes, the likelihood of errors occurring in that physical distance 
are higher and therefore any small errors or signal loss likely result in those uh, errors and those issues we see with BSODs, black screens, and just it not working and not communicating properly to the motherboard. Just to give you an example, motherboard manufacturers had to upgrade their PCB designs in a big way to match the full uh, speed for the PCIe Gen 4 interface. And that's why only a handful of X470 and the older B450 motherboards actually support Gen 4, while the rest of them couldn't fully meet that full Gen 4 spec. It probably explains why the X570 and B550 motherboards are slightly more expensive because they have the appropriate traces and hardware to support that whole Gen 4 spec. All this puts the riser cable in a really bad spot when trying to properly support the standard. I mean, if motherboards had trouble over a relatively short amount of distance, I mean, imagine going a full length of a riser cable. So that's not easy. But it doesn't mean that creating certified Gen 4 riser cables is going to be impossible. So Lian Lee is working on this right now with silver plated copper for high transmission and lower data loss uh, through distances over six inches, I think. Then we have companies who are going to be using reed drivers to boost signal strength and just heavier shielding to prevent data loss again. All of that leads to massive increase in price for a proper Gen 4 cable. And it's also why manufacturers have been really slow of validating and producing them. As far as I'm aware, there's not a single case on the market right now that comes equipped with a Gen 4 PCI riser cable inside the box. Maybe some boutique cases to future-proof their stuff, but you know, if you were to buy one yourself, they are pretty expensive. So with the history lesson out of the way, here's the kicker. Using a standard Gen 3 riser cable between two Gen 4 devices may not automatically lead to problems. So check this out. We have tried over 20 riser cables from a ton of different companies and the results are all over the place. Some never booted or had random blue screens, so they're listed as failed. Others did not show any problems even after hours of intense testing. The crazy part is that we could not see any patterns between passes and fails. Even with an identical riser cable from the exact same brand, one worked, the other didn't, and we don't know why. So that's kind of crazy. Also, the length of the riser cable didn't seem to matter. To make things even more complicated and random, the Lian Lee riser cable that was perfectly working on the B550 motherboard was not working on another motherboard. So you're not even guaranteed for things to work properly in every situation. We don't know why, but maybe it's due to some minor manufacturing differences where this fractal cable that I bought will work perfectly fine in my machine. But if you buy one, it might not. It might have boot problems or something. So. Who knows? But the main question that I have, and you probably too, is why? Why do these issues exist? For example, why is there an issue with detection when technically a motherboard set to auto should be able to detect a lower bandwidth signal and automatically switch itself? After talking to a few motherboard and riser cable manufacturers, there are a few possibilities. The first one is the cable may not even be carrying the baseline signal to tell the motherboard to kick down into the Gen 3 compatibility mode, and that would lead to a communication conflict, which causes a post error on the motherboard and results in a black screen at boot. The other issue when people are experiencing blue screens may be due to temporary errors that pop up that lose signal over the cable's length. So what is there to do about all this aside from running out and buying an expensive Gen 4 riser cable? The first thing is obvious if you're building a new computer, build everything from outside the enclosure so you can manipulate the components and troubleshoot easier and obviously install the graphics card into the motherboard first to make sure everything is working properly and then install the riser cable and to make sure everything's working properly again. If you're new to building computers, Eber did an amazing guide, check it out over here. But what if you have a riser cable that you want to use, but it's not working? So the first thing is that most motherboards, but not all have the manual switch for PCI Express compatibility. So Gen 1, 2, 3, and 4. So if your riser cable is not working, plug the graphics card directly into your motherboard and enter the BIOS. On ASUS motherboards, you'll need to head over into the advanced menu and then select PCIe X16 mode and change that to Gen 3. For Gigabyte, it's in settings, miscellaneous, and then there's a toggle to switch between PCIe slot configs. MSI is pretty straightforward, or I really don't like the way their BIOS is set up. The B550 and X570 boards have it in the settings, advanced, and then the PCIe subsystem settings. Here's a section called the PCIe E1 Gen switch, with the E1 meaning it's the primary slot. Click on this and you can change it to Gen 3. ASRock is a bit of a pain because depending on the motherboard, depending on the BIOS and the revision, those settings can be slightly different. We use 
the X570 Tai Chi as an example. And here you need to go into advanced AMD PBS and finally change the PCIe X16 bus interface from auto to gen three. Unfortunately, we don't have any Biostar motherboards, but I'm sure the settings are quite similar. MSI, regardless of the tier of the motherboard, always has the manual switch for the PCIe signaling, which is great. And if you've seen otherwise, let us know in the comments. While on the more affordable side from Asus, like the Prime A series, the Gigabyte DS3, some ASRock Phantom stuff, they don't have the manual switch for the PCI signaling, which is a bit of an issue. And I hope that in the future, uh, all this stuff becomes a bit more transparent and easy accessible for the end user. And lastly, once you change the signaling in the BIOS, you can plug the riser cable back in, plug the GPU into the riser cable, and you should be good to go. There is just one major pain in the butt, and that is if you update the BIOS on the motherboard, it will revert the settings back to the default, and therefore you might encounter again, black screen, it not loading or not booting or blue screens, and therefore you have to redo that whole process again of reinserting the graphics card, changing the PCI signaling to Gen 3, and then reconfiguring your system again. So the next thing, let's talk performance. Obviously we're lowering the bandwidth on our PCI slot. And when we run the bandwidth test with 3 Mark, there is going to be that half slash of bandwidth, 26 versus 13, Gen 4 versus Gen 3 respectively. But what about gaming? So let's take a look at the RTX 3090, the most powerful GPU around right now. And if anything's gonna show an impact, it would be this. Overall, there are some very, very small performance trade-offs, but nothing you would notice with a naked eye. It is interesting to know that it looks like games with ray tracing enabled might benefit more from Gen 4. And that's something I think we need to look at uh, a bit more in a future video. But either way, there's nothing really uh, concerning or worrying here. While there might not be any visible performance issues when switching to Gen 3, there are some other things we need to take into account, and those mostly focus on support for next-gen technologies. For example, direct storage and NVIDIA's RTX I.O., which allows an NVMe SSD and GPU to communicate directly with one another, and for that you'll need an ultra-fast SSD and probably the bandwidth granted by Gen 4. Another thing to mention is that as soon as you turn off Gen 4 support, you lose access to things like smart access memory, on AMD platforms. Now sure, motherboard companies have proven that resizable bar support does work on Gen 3, but that option hasn't been opened yet on X570 and B550. So now let's take everything into consideration. Is it worth going with that vertical GPU mount for a beautiful showcase and potentially some airflow challenges? Just make sure that you plug in the graphics card in first if your riser cable doesn't work. And for ITX enclosures, where mounting the graphics card may not be possible into the motherboard inside the case, make sure to do the assembly outside of it just to verify everything is fine. But moving forward, there are a few things we would love to see. Uh, first of all, some more transparency from riser cable brands. Uh, so Cooler Master and Fractal Design have updated their compatibility on the website that says that you should switch to Gen 3 in the BIOS before installing any Gen 4 hardware. It would be great for motherboard companies to include that Gen 4 to Gen 3 switch that isn't buried far in the settings, but something that's a bit more visible. And of course, I'm hoping that manufacturing companies can produce Gen 4 riser cables at a low enough cost so that if one comes included with the enclosure, it's not going to skyrocket the price of said enclosure. But yeah, I think that covers everything when it comes to riser cables, Gen 4 compatibility, Gen 3 compatibility. Let me know if you've had any issues and hopefully this guide has helped you you know, remove some headaches in the future. I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.